Hey, what's going on everyone? Welcome back to the Snowbike Channel. It's spring here in Alaska and things are kind of coming down slowly to a to an end of the season and so we're looking over gear, looking over things, making sure uh, we're set up for next year and uh, replacing the inner jack shaft bearing right here today. Um, a lot of the I think 21 and 22 kits had single bearing housings and um, you know if you haven't already I strongly recommend getting that out of there and getting a dual bearing uh, in there. It'll last longer. It'll be um, overall just uh, more reliable for you. Um, we had uh, one single bearing failure out in the field this year and uh, he was able to limp home and, and get back. Um, so you never want it to happen out in the field. And uh, it's just preventative maintenance. These are cheap to replace. Uh, I think they're, oh, I th about 80 bucks, maybe 80 to 90 bucks. And uh, they're pretty easy to replace. I'll show you how to do it. All right, so the first thing you're going to do is take off the outer cover for your uh, belt drive or chain drive and uh, you'll take a 15 millimeter socket and um, loosen up the idle tensioner and get that out of the way and then you'll need to take off the upper sprocket and remove the belt so now with the idle tensioner loosened uh, one trick i like to do is when you go to take off the sprocket um, spinning the sprocket will actually spin the whole the whole track kit and so I use the brake ideally this is a little bit better if it's on the bike still and you can just reach up with one hand and hold the brake while you take off the, the bolt um, I don't have this on the bike right now but what we're gonna do is hold the brake like this right here So now that you've got the bolts out of the pulley, you can simply just grab it and pull it off, pull the whole thing off. All right, so now that we have the belt off, we're going to take the rotor cover off. And you'll need an Allen to get this one little Allen bolt right here out. Once you've got that out, there's a series of two or three tabs there on the top and on the bottom as well that you'll uh, push to remove this plastic cover. All right, so now with the plastic cover off, we're going to use a 15 millimeter and take this nut right here off and pay special attention to the order of the washers, the rotor, and then there's a spacer behind it. And again, if you, you'll need to use the brake to stop the rotor. All right, so now that that bolt is removed from the rotor, um, the axle is kind of in there just free floating. And so I'll use a hammer and a punch and just gently punch out the axle um, slowly, or the shaft. I've got the rotor out. You can take the spacer out. Thank you. 
at this point. These spacers surrounding the sprocket can also come out. And then you can pull the whole shaft up. This is pretty dirty. I'm going to clean it up and uh, put a light layer of grease on it and clean out the threads from the Loctite. So I've got clean threads. And next we'll take 13 millimeter wrench or socket wrench and loosen up these four bolts. And then we'll take out this whole uh, bearing housing. So when you get in here and you're looking at the bearings, um, you wanna spin them with your hand. And if they feel at all notchy, they need to be replaced. This inner one is feeling pretty smooth. This, well, I should say this outer jack shaft, single bearing is feeling pretty smooth. This inner jack shaft bearing is done. It's, it's toast. That's one of the things I like about timber sled is they're so easy to work on. And, you know, I ordered these parts and I got them, got the new bearings and housing already stuffed, ready for me to put in, in uh, like two days. And so I just, that's what I really like about timber sleds. They're built tough, easy to get parts, easy to work on. All right, so like I was saying before, when you get in there and you try to spin the bearings, if they get hung up at all, like right there, that one kind of hung up and it's, it's hard to move past that spot. Uh, same on the inside bearing, try to move it around. This one feels pretty notchy and done. Um, nice thing about these two is they're rebuildable, so you can get in there and get that circlip out and then pack two new bearings in there and have a freshie ready to go just in case you need it out in the field, keep it back. Okay, so we'll mount the new one. Okay, so right now I've got all four of these bolts um, mounted and not quite tightened. So you actually wanna leave just a little bit of slop in there so that when you do drive um, that jack shaft through there, that little bit of wiggle um, will help it go through straight. It's kind of floating in there. And so um, I like to get it in there first, make sure everything looks straight and tight, and then, uh, then slowly tighten down these four nuts. Okay, so now we're gonna be putting the jack shaft back in. I've got a little bit of oil on it, and we're gonna be going back in the way that it came out. Uh, the short splines are gonna be on the outside of the kit for the pulley, and then the long side spline is gonna go towards the rotor. And so we'll get it started. And then you'll have to take the spacers and the sprocket and notice that there's a short one and a long one. The short one goes on the outside of the kit and the long one goes towards the brake rotor. And you're gonna have to, this takes a little bit of finagling. Uh, you're gonna have to get it in there, kind of where you want it. And then just work the jack shaft until it pops through. And then you wanna leave room right here so that when we go to add the brake rotor back in, um, you've got room to slip the, the disc in there. And now's a good time to wash the hands. You got grease all over your hands. Go inside, soap them up, get cleaned up so that uh, when you handle the rotor, you're not handling them with greasy hands. All right, so we're back. Um, before I grab the rotor, I'm gonna clean it off and um, just make sure I get any residual 
grime and wax and things that we spray on the chains, lube, whatever, that might be on there off. So I got some really nice, clean, fresh brakes. All right, that's looking pretty good. Try and handle the disc from the outside edges. And I've got to tap this out just a tiny bit. And you might need to get a flathead screwdriver or um, something like this just to help spread the disc plates, the pads. Flat in place. And then you might have to spin the rotor just to align it with the splines, but when you do, um, tap it until you feel the jack shaft bottom out. It'll stop. It's meant to do that. and. That's as far as it goes. And then from here, uh, you've got your bolts, and this was the order that it goes in. There's this large washer like this, then uh, this next smaller washer, and then your bolt. The bolt, we're gonna clean off and um, put a little bit of uh, red Loctite on here. Okay, so we're back. We've got some red Loctite on. Slip that back in there. get that on for now. Um, what we're gonna do again is just use the brake to help stop the rotor, and then we'll get the correct torque on that, which I believe is 44.3 foot-pounds. So now we're ready to put the uh, pulley and the belt back on. And I guess at this point, really you just wanna make sure that you've got the belt oriented in the right direction. They have an arrow that shows which way the belt's supposed to rotate. If it's a used belt, often that arrow will be gone. And so when you take this belt off, I like to lay it down uh, with the gear still in it just to make it easy for me when I grab it, I can just put it back on and know that the orientation is correct. I use a rubber mallet just to help kind of tap it into place. Sometimes it'll get hung up on um, the splines and just needs a little extra encouragement to get on there. All right, so now that we've got that, um, we'll Loctite this bolt as well. 
Uh, again, I'm using red Loctite. You probably could get away with using blue Loctite, but I like to use uh, the red. And the torque setting for this is the same, 44.3 foot-pounds. Uh, or actually 45 foot-pounds. It says so right in the side. If you have a belt drive, they have a little cheat sheet on, you can't see it from the camera angle here, but it's on this side, down behind the belt. There's a little sticker that shows all the specs. And so we'll tighten this one down. We'll use the brake trick again, just to hold the brake while we torque this, uh, this pulley down. Okay, 45 foot pounds there. Uh, I guess now we're at the point where we can put the brake cover back on. And down at the bottom, there's a tab. And at the top, there's two tabs. And so what I'm gonna try to do is get the bottom tab started. First, it's tricky because I'm not on that side. There we go. Yeah, just press it in there. Make sure all three tabs are locked in. And once they are, Take that little bolt, it's not a bolt, it's actually a little screw. And put this back in. And this is what holds it, secures it in place. There's a tab down here that I didn't mention, and that was sticking out, and that's what I just snapped back in. So there's actually four tabs. There's two in the top, one here in the side, and another one down the bottom. So that's really, that's really it. Um, we'll put the cover back on, and before we do that, of course, we'll tighten up the um, the tensioner, the idle tensioner, and get the correct belt tension that we want. But aside from that, that's all there is to uh, changing out the bearing. So I hope this helps. If you own a kit that's got two or three seasons on it, maybe has 60, 70, 80 hours, think about replacing some of these bearings. There's a dual bearing here, a single right beside your brake rotor, and then two dual bearings down in the drive shaft. And um, the ones that I've seen fail first is this inner jack shaft bearing. So really watch that one. And uh, yeah, get in there in the summer, check them, make sure they're good. And uh, happy brapping. Thanks for uh, checking out the show and hope this is useful for people. Consider giving it a like and subscribe and I'll keep pumping out more content like this. So cheers everyone.